Hello friends, I'm Oom and today we're diving into the fantastic world of Linux again, specifically Fedora. Because recently I've been thinking like we're in 2025 now and I've been suggesting to all of you guys that Linux Mint is the King Kong of Linux. But is it actually true? Especially when considering it is 2025 and Linux Mint feels outdated. Like yes, I know that it uses Cinnamon desktop environment and all we need to do is just change the desktop environment, but no. Linux Mint Cinnamon is a name which goes together. And the Cinnamon desktop has been getting better, but to be honest, is it? As compared to Gnome KDE? No, it isn't. And when you compare the RAM usage and CPU, GPU resources, everything, it is nearly the same. Cinnamon, KDE, Gnome, they're all almost equal. So why it feels premium when I use KDE or Gnome? And I don't feel anything exclusive or luxurious in Linux life when I use Linux Mint. That is why, that is the reason I'm saying today that Fedora is maybe the King Kong of Linux. And in this video, I'm going to actually install it on my main machine. Like yes, I've been using AxOS on my USB drive, but I still can actually install another operating system and I choose to make it Fedora for the sake of now. And the whole installation process, setting up and using it will answer the question that is Fedora the latest, the new King Kong of Linux or is it not? So let's get started, shall we? Now first, let's get to the BIOS. There it is. And it is our UFI SanDisk. And let's start Fedora Workstation. And there it is. Now what we'll be doing is installing Fedora as fast as possible. There we go, Fedora. Now, shall we just go and install Fedora? No. First, I'm going to connect to Wi-Fi. There it is, connect it. Now, install Fedora. Well, considering how everything is, it is pretty nice. This is the new amazing install, you know, installer of Fedora. I actually like it. So, yeah, let's just install it, shall we? Next, share disk with other operating system. Yes, we can do that. Or we can just, you know, do everything by ourselves. But let's just go on with share disk with another operating system. Reclaim additional space. Keep the current disk layout. Use the available space to dual boot. Reclaim additional space. I don't know what that means. Next. So right now, as you can see, we have Windows installed here already. And then there's available free space of 400 GBs. So I'm going to reclaim it and it should do everything by itself. Literally, it is that simple. So yes, installation process, Fedora is actually a okay. Next, I don't want any encryption. There we go. And so this is the layout. EFI boot, there it is. Slash boot, okay. Then we have slash and slash home on the same partition. It's actually good. And it is using BRTFS sub volume, which is amazing. Now let's just install it. It is that simple to install it. And looks like it has been installed successfully. So now let's exit from the live desktop, power off, yuck, go on, and let's just remove the USB drive and start the system. Let's see. Okay then, so the Grubbin is pretty perfect in my opinion. There's Fedora and Windows all together. So yep, the installation and dual booting is pretty easy on Fedora. And definitely the speed, like man. And there we go. Fedora is here with you know, the welcome setup. So now we're going to need to set up the whole system. And it's pretty fast. Next. Let me just go back. Okay then, so English. Next. Privacy. Well, just stop automatic problem reporting. Next. Time zone. India. Enable third party repositories. Thank you. Next. Now it's actually going to enable it in the background. Now full name. I'm going to go with let you know. Next. And all done. And there it is, Fedora 42 installed. And yeah, there's a tool. Yeah, the usual tool. Let me just close it. Okay then, so leaving that, it has been properly installed at last. And it is using approximately 1.7 GBs, which is pretty okay for me. Comparing what I'm getting in return. And yep, this is it. Now this is a freshly installed system. And now I have to do what we call installing the updates and stuff. Like, let me just go to terminal and type sudo dnf update it's gonna scan for all the updates well i was just searching for updates and gnome software already did that 
Well, let's just do that and let's just take a look at GNOME software all together at the same time. Oh man, it's going to refresh the data from Flathub. I don't like that. But still now it's going to just run in the background doing that. Well, it's okay. But leaving that, the whole experience of installing Fedora in dual boot was pretty fast. And now I'm going to just get to the screen while I'm setting the whole system for me. Okay, so here I am at last on my Fedora setup. And as you can see, I have set up everything. From my web browsers, to all the other applications, to the icon pack and the wallpaper for sure. And a few tweaks, for example, when you open settings, the design, the layout is pretty nice. While the Oron theme is not different than normal GNOME. And even Nautilus looks nice. Do you want to know why that is? It's because I was able to set up everything so fast. Like installing the NVIDIA property driver was just as easy as just searching for NVIDIA in the Play well, not the place, so definitely this GNOME soft pistol. And there I just had to click this one and install it. I actually installed NVIDIA Linux graphics driver, the proprietary one, directly from the app store. That is indeed something. And what else did I do? I just, well, for installing all the other applications, I just opened my terminal and updated the system. Just like that. And then I installed something even amazing. I installed Auto CPU Frick. Now, this is an amazing application which actually handles all CPU and GPU stuff. For example, right now, it actually manages my CPU fan speed along with the amount of wattage given to my CPU. Along with that, the governor, which is right now in power save, sometimes in balanced power depending on the situation, the amount of wattage you using from my battery. And then whether to turn on turbo boost or not. And then if the temperature is going up, then it will just increase the fan speed. It is just so much efficient and it is all automated. I don't need to do anything else. And this is the beauty of, well, Fedora to be honest. Because being this clean and fast allows it to get customized so amazingly. And I actually suggest you guys to try this application, well, tool, auto CPU effect. And when I go to this particular application, as you can see, I can change the governors or CPU turbo override or not. It all depends on me. And leaving that, I have NVIDIA property driver as well with all the power you might think I might need. I have the whole power miser along with NVIDIA configuration and power profiles, everything else. While having my favorite web browser here, running so damn fast. And everything is just so minimal, like really minimal while giving me all the tools I need and when I talk about the partitioning then the partitioning is pretty simple the first four are of Windows and the next three are of Linux yep it's that simple and there by the way if you like want to try this wallpaper and a lot of wallpapers then you just have to well go to the description I have a full catalog of all the wallpapers I've ever used leaving that when we go to the system about section we have Fedora 42 and I also have NVIDIA RTX GPU right now. So it is right now in sort of like NVIDIA Prime of loading. Whenever I need to use the GPU, then only the NVIDIA RTX GPU will get full power. Like when I use NVIDIA SMI. As you can see, it is just using 8 watts right now. And there's almost nothing except the GNOME shell because I like using GNOME shell with my RTX GPU. It just uses 5% of the GPU throughout all the time. And along with that, I have my OBS recording using this GPU. That is why it is using 8 watts and 5%. And the GNOME shell only uses 1 MB of GPU memory. Can you believe it? Yep, that is indeed the beauty of GNOME and Fedora. Leaving that, there are a lot of things I'd want to install. For example, I'll first come here and install Steam. Yep. Just that easy. And when I say Steam, I say from the official RPM Fusion repository, this one, not the flat hub con. And then I would like to install the Vinci Resolve, which I believe is not here. No. Let's try Resolve. No, it is not. Well, I can just install it directly from the website. And I, I like the GNOME desktop so much. Like it is pretty minimal and simple, but really beautiful. And especially when considering these sort of things, like, Man, it is nice. 
and considering the time it took to you know set up everything and get started on fedora i would say that if you are a beginner who wants to try out linux or just anyone who doesn't want to mess around for hours and hours fedora is indeed the best distro now i'm not declaring it the king kong of linux because i still have to judge for that and in the future video i will confirm it so don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss that video and a lot of amazing content is coming to our channel and yeah i'm trying something pretty beautiful and awesome and it's going to help me in my life a lot well a dedicated video and a series of things are coming on this channel so don't forget to subscribe and i'll meet you in the next video till then i'm um signing out